So those, those two Thalaban, he ran all the way, fled, and the army of the Nawas tried to track him and they couldn't. So he sent, he sent an Adunawa, sent an army, they tried to track him, they couldn't capture him, and he fled all the way to the Roman Emperor, pleading for his help. So what the Roman Emperor said to him, he said, the Roman Emperor got enthusiastic about it, he's killing these people because they followed our religion, then we'll show him what we'll do. So what did the, the Roman Emperor do? He had the Ethiopia under him, and there was the Najashi, the king of Ethiopia, and they were also Christians. So the Roman Emperor gave those two Thalaban a letter to go to the Najashi, asking the Najashi to go and retaliate for those Christians that were killed. So those two Thalaban went with a letter from the Roman Emperor to and Najashi, the Ethiopian king. And then the Ethiopian king sent an army of 70,000 Ethiopians traveling through, uh, on the sea or through the sea to Yemen with the leadership of Ariat. So he sent 70,000 Ethiopian soldiers. And this is, this is where the interpretation of those two scholars that told Rabbi Abdul Nasr, the first man we spoke about, about the, uh, about the black people or the Sudanese or the Ethiopians coming to overtake your land became true. So, and Najashi, the, uh, the, 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 the Ethiopian king, he sent Ariat, who is the general, of the army of 70,000 Ethiopian soldiers to Yemen. And they went and fought against Zunawaz and his army. And Ariat and his army, 70,000 of them, destroyed the army of Zunawaz. And Zunawaz fled. And he refused to be captured by the Ethiopians or to be killed by the Ethiopians. He kept on fleeing until he went to the sea. And he kept on going in the sea until he committed suicide or... He drowned in the sea. He refused the hands of the Ethiopians to lay on him or to be captured by them. Now Yemen is going through a new phase. It's going through the phase of the Ethiopians. And now the Ethiopians with the leadership of Ariat took over Yemen. And Ariat was an Ethiopian, a general from the army of the Ethiopian king. And Ariat was so tough and rough that the Ethiopians... And his soldiers and the general started to complain of his roughness and hardships. And, 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 and it being hard. So one of the generals of Ariat, his name is Abraha. One of the generals of Abi Ariat, his name is Abraha. He turned against Ariat. And the army of the Ethiopian army was split to two. One with Ariat, one with Abraha. And Ariat is the original or the essential general who's been sent and assigned by the Ethiopian king. Now, in, Ethiopia, in, in Yemen, the Ethiopian army were, or the Ariat was too tough on the soldiers and the generals, so they split. One group was with Abraha, another group with Ariat. And then the two groups came face to face. Before the two groups fighting one another, Abraha sent a letter to Ariat saying to him, instead of getting the Ethiopians fighting one another, the issue is between me and you. Let us come out and fight one another. And whoever wins, the Ethiopian army will unite under him. So Abraha came out, fighting Ariat, and then Abraha killed Ariat. Before Abraha, before Abraha killed Ariat, Ariat had an, a spear. He came to attack Abraha, Keeping in mind, Abraha was much shorter than Ariat, and Ariat was much bigger than Abraha. And when Ariat came to attack Abraha, Abraha moved his head where the, uh, where the spear clipped an edge of his nose. And that's why he was named Abraha al Ashram. Ashram means cut. So he was cut from his nose. And then Abraha jumped on Ariat, deceiving Ariat because he had one soldier behind Abraha. Hiding to fight with him. So that soldier jumped on Ariat and Abraha killed Ariat. So then the Ethiopian army was united under Abraha. Who heard of that? The Ethiopian king. When the Ethiopian king heard that Abraha overthrew his own general, the Ethiopian king so, got so angry and Najashi got so angry and he made an oath that he's going to walk all the way to Yemen, cut 
cut the hair of Abraha and step on it on the lands of Yemen. So Abraha was in a difficult situation. He can't face the Najashi. The Najashi is too big and too powerful for Abraha to face him. So what did Abraha do? He shaved his hair and he got a bag of the sand of Yemen and he sent a messenger to the Najashi, to the king of Ethiopia, saying very diplomatic and nice words that I am with you and I stand by you and you are my master and always be a master. You always be my master. I was a slave of yours and Ariat was a slave of yours and I'll continue to be a slave of yours and I've heard of the oath that you did for that I got you my hair and here is some of the dust from the land of Yemen. Put my hair at the top of that dust and step on it. Isn't that what you promised? So when the Najashi saw that and he saw the loyalty of Abraha towards him, he became happy and he sent him a messenger saying, then I'll endorse you to be the leader and the general of Yemen. Stay there and take care of Yemen. Abraha in return, he wanted to, he's still afraid that the Najash is angry from him. So what did he do? And this is where the story of Ashab al-Fil begins. Abraha, he built a church, a place of worship. He said, I'm going to build a church, a place of worship that's never ever been built in the Arabian Peninsula as a respect to the Najashi. So he could get the endorsement of the Najashi and take that doubt out of the Najashi's mind. Because any time the Najashi could take him out, suspend him, or get rid of him, or kill him. So he wanted to pay back the Najashi, the Ethiopian king, by building a massive church by the name of Qulais. Uh, and not only built it, but he said, I'm not only going to build it for the Najashi, but I'm going to turn the Arabs away from the Kaaba to come to this Qulais. And this is where the story of Ashab al-Fil begins for insha'Allah to continue with that next week.